In this video, we're going to complete example two. It says a car costs $24,000 to buy brand new and depreciates in value by $3,000 each year. Question A says represent this information on a graph using the y axis for the value of the car, B, and the x axis for the number of years, T. And we can see these two variables in our table here uh, the number of years that have passed, T, and the value of the car, V. They've already given us some T values from 0 all the way to 8, and we've just got to fill in underneath those numbers. Okay, so what's the value of the car after zero years have passed? Well, when it was brand new, it was $24,000. That represents the zero year, I guess you could call it. So under zero, it was worth $24,000. Each year, it depreciates or goes down by $3,000. So all we need to do each time is subtract $3,000. So after one year, it's worth $21,000. Then minus three grand again, it'll be worth $18,000. Then $15,000. And I'll pause and keep going. You'll notice that when we get to the eighth year, the car is worth nothing. So there's really no point going any further than that. You're not going to have a car that's worth negative three thousand dollars so we need to put our axes on the graph and i'm going to do that using a line tool so i want my horizontal axis which is usually x but in this case it's going to be t for time and then i'm going to put in my vertical axis which is going to be the value of the car so we'll label that our horizontal axis is t and our vertical axis is v for the value of the car now when we look at the number of years that have passed we got as far as eight years and i think the best way to do that is to just go up by intervals of one so 0, 1, 2, and we'll go a little over the mark because the, this grid is a 10 by 10 grid. But that's fine. It's better to go past the mark than to go under the mark. So we've reached 8, and it's not going to hurt to go all the way to 10. All right, the value of our car needs to reach as high as $24,000. And I reckon the easiest way to do this would actually be to go up by 3,000 each time. And you can cheat and write 3K if you want, 6K, 9K, 12K. You'll notice we've gone a little higher than 24K. We've gone up to 27K. Once again, it's okay to go beyond the mark. You just don't want to be short of that. All right, now let's label our points. So looking at our table of values when time is zero the value of the car is 24,000. so that would be at this point here we'll put a little x the next column when time is one the value is 21,000. so let's label this point this time and we keep going and it should make a nice straight line because this is a linear model and you can see because we've picked nice values it meant that our points fell on the intersection of lines and we kind of forced that to happen to make it easier to draw if you can do that that's great you can't always do it like this all right now we're going to join it with a line and for this particular line we really don't want to have arrows on it because we don't actually want this line to go on forever now the reason we don't want this line to go on forever is because the car was 24 grand brand new. It was never more than that, so we don't want the line to keep coming up here. 
And once the car reaches zero dollars, it can't go below that. We can't have a car valued at a negative amount. So we don't need these arrows. Now we've finished question A, so we're now going to move on to question B. Question B wants us to write a linear equation that represents the value of the car V in terms of the number of years that have passed T. And we're going to use our gradient intercept formula, which is Y equals MX plus B, remembering that M stands for gradient and B stands for Y intercept. And all we need to do to find these is to look at the previous graph. Y intercept being the, the easy one. It's here. The Y intercept is where it crosses the Y axis. Now, it's not called the Y axis anymore, it's called the V axis. But we know that if it's the Y axis, we're just talking about the vertical axis. So it crosses there at 24K or 24,000. So we know that B is going to be 24,000. Now we need to find the gradient. Okay, to find the gradient, we need to draw a right angle triangle. And the good thing is we can actually see one already. This line makes a right angle triangle with the two axes. I mean, if I really have to, I can color it in green so we can see what the triangle looks like. like so with a little right angle here. Now, to calculate gradient, we need two things. We need our rise and we need our run. The run is going to be a bit easier here. The run is going across and starting at zero, we need to move eight steps for our run. So our run is eight. Now, we've got to be a little more careful with the rise. Some people make the mistake of just counting squares. They start at the bottom and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now it's 8 squares, but that's not correct because each square represents 3,000. We can see that here. If we step up from 0, 1 square up is 3,000, 6,000, 9,000, and so on until we get up to 24,000. So this rise in this case is 24,000. Okay, we've got our rise and run. So to find our gradient, gradient is rise over run, which in this case is 24,000 over 8, and 24,000 divide 8 is 3,000. Our gradient is 3,000. You'll notice if we go back to the graph that our numbers went down by 3,000 each time, and your gradient is usually representative of what the numbers are doing in your table, whether they're going down by a certain number or going up. Alright, now just to be careful here, your gradient can be negative or it can be positive. If we look at this graph, if I was to draw a running man on the left and he was running to the right, he would be running downhill. So our gradient needs to be a negative. It needs to be negative 3,000. So we'll put that there. Now let's substitute it into our equation. Y equals MX plus B, where M is the gradient, or negative 3,000. And B is our y-intercept, which is positive 24,000. Now we also need to change our y and x here because we're supposed to use the pronumerals v and t and we can do this simply by looking at the graph we can see that v is on the vertical axis which is usually the y-axis and t for time is on the horizontal axis which is usually the x-axis so x gets replaced with t y gets replaced with v so y is v X is now T, like so. Now, we've finished question B, but I'm going to take this, oops, I'm going to take this equation 
and we're going to use it to solve questions C and questions D. All right, looking at question C first, it says, what is the value of the car after three and a quarter years have passed? That means our time is three and a quarter or 3.25. And all we need to do is substitute it into our equation. So we go V equals negative 3000 times T, which in this case is 3.25 plus 24,000. Bringing up our calculator, we go negative 3000 times 3.25 plus 24,000 equals, and we get 14,250. The value of the car after three and a quarter years will be $14,250. Let's now move on to question D. It says, if the car is now worth $5,600, how many years have passed? So this time your V or the value of the car is $5,600 and we're going to substitute that into our equation. So we go 5,600 equals negative 3,000 T plus 24,000. We need to solve this equation and what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the same thing on both sides. First I'm going to subtract 24,000 because that will get rid of the 24,000 on the right. Okay, 5,600 minus 24,000 will give us negative 18,400. Negative 18,400 will equal negative 3,000 T. Now we need to divide both sides by the same number. And we're going to divide by negative 3,000. The reason we're doing this is it will cancel out the 3,000 as well as the negative in front of T. Negative 18,400 divided by negative 3,000 equals 6.13. So our time is going to equal 6.13, the 3 repeating. Anyway, that concludes example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.